dreams, and access to another reality. I welcome you, and thank you for stopping by to listen. I hope you are well, and that you find this topic, which I personally like very much, interesting. Zael here. This is not the first time that we talk about dreams in this channel, but today I would like to go into the subject more than ever, because together with the understanding of time as such, I consider it important or especially useful to understand how everything works, or at least it gives us very clear and interesting clues for it. Already at the time, when we talked about premonitory dreams, I commented on this very thing with which I begin now but I will summarize it to give an introduction to the rest. Dreams are, as even at the level of basic terrestrial psychology one can come to conclude, a perfect representation or reflection of how or who the person who dreams them is, given that they represent with total fidelity what we carry within us. Or rather, what forms our conscious, subconscious and, above all, unconscious. Broadening our vision a little on this, and being aware of the law of mirrors, we can also easily conclude that the reality we perceive as the real and palpable material world, the one we experience when we wake up, is also exactly the same. A representation or reflection of what we are, or who we are. The clearest difference between the two realities would be the much harsher and doughier perception of the latter, to define it in some way although I don't know if it really manages to describe it well. Above all, I think it would be much more accurate to say that the main difference would be the perception of time from the moment an idea comes to our mind until it is embodied or manifested in what we can perceive through our senses, so to speak, as well as the limitations we experience in each of those realms. Limitations whose origins are our own ideas, as well as some perceptual and collective agreements, although that subject is much deeper and more complex, so I will try not to get too far off track. Be that as it may, what we experience within dreams is another reality, or rather, another realm within the same reality, with its own laws and sensations. And I know that many people pursue the goal of gaining awareness of that when they find themselves within that realm, and therefore freedom within that realm. Freedom to manifest what they wish, or to vanish there and then what they don't like, or even to make use of what we might call powers above the natural, in inverted commas, such as flight, instant teleportation, control over time, or traversing solid surfaces. This curious phenomenon is often referred to as lucid dreaming. Reading and researching on the subject some time ago, though admittedly not in depth, I could see how some people recommended practices such as waking up every so often to induce this type of dream. I personally do not recommend it at all, for two main reasons. The first is that you will completely destroy your schedule, your sleep patterns, and your healthy rest. And the second is that it makes no sense at all since this can be achieved in a much simpler way. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Let's recap. What you experience in dreams is a perfect reflection of what dwells in your mind on a day-to-day -day basis, what you carry stored in the various planes of your mind. Therefore, if you wish to learn to become aware that you are in a dream, or that you possess the ability to control what happens in them, it is as simple as assuming and integrating that very thing into your day-to-day -day waking life. The moment you put this knowledge into practice on a daily basis, the fact that you yourself are the one who day after day is generating the reality that surrounds you when you observe that your world is handing you things that previously had your attention for at least a moment and you try to work on yourself and control this reality a little more, little by little this will be captured or tattooed in your unconscious as well. Therefore, you will see the results more and more frequently in your dreams. You will be able to notice this, for example, in what has surely already happened to you at some time. What I will tell you next. Surely you have dreamt at some time that you could fly. It's a liberating and very pleasant feeling, isn't it? However, I am also sure that at some point you have stopped being able to do it as you did a few minutes ago. 
Suddenly you try to fly and it's not so easy anymore. You jump and jump, but at best you can only do it for a few seconds, when before you could. How frustrating! Why does this happen? Simple. Your ideas about the possible and the impossible are interfering with your dream. What happens when you start to become aware, in your daily life, that it is your ideas that form your reality? When you know that whether or not you will be able to achieve something depends on your ideas, especially if you have already seen yourself as capable of that very thing. When you know the true importance and strength of your thoughts in what you will and will not achieve, that is when you will gradually begin to see those results much clearer and quicker in dreams, because of the early manifestation that exists there. Suddenly, you will find yourself within the dream fighting against your own mind, and managing to take flight again, to give you this example. Or you will find yourself pondering why something will happen this way or that way because you are in a dream. Either you will know how to defend yourself against any attack or nocturnal visitation, because you will know how to defend yourself by employing any spatio-temporal manipulation within the dream against an open attack, or you will find yourself discovering and unmasking those entities in the lower astral who wanted to cause a reaction in you in order to feed on you. In other words, you will automatically become invincible. Literally omnipotent. In the same way, if you stop believing in yourself and give in to intrusive thoughts, you will see the same thing reflected in your dreams. So you can use your dreams as a gauge for how that work is working out for you, for example, and what you need to focus on, or stop focusing on. But I don't see dreams as just that, but as another realm just as real. And not only because of the knowledge we may have learned or acquired through what others teach us. Dreams give us that information or those clues all the time. For example, I am sure it has happened to many of you that within the dream itself, a sound was going to happen shortly, and it turned out that when that sound came, it was perfectly synchronized with another sound that was happening in the realm that you perceive upon awakening. And no, I'm not talking about an alarm clock, since we could argue that the body was already used to it and prepared for it to go off at that very moment. I am talking about a totally eventual and unpredictable sound. This type of event clearly confirms the union between the two realms, leaving a curious sensation similar to that seen in the film Avatar, where when one body wakes up the other falls asleep, but both are united by a nexus that is the consciousness that animates them and that lives all these experiences, even though they are different worlds. Sometimes you might even dream that you wake up from the place where you fell asleep and experience a series of events with full coherence, only to wake up later and be surprised to find that it was a dream. Even waking up again and again, already doubting what is a dream and what is not. You might also experience a reality that you know could not be happening in what you would call the real world, such as talking to or seeing a person you know is no longer there because they have passed away. It is in those moments that you may also realize that you are living in that realm which could also be seen as an alternate timeline. This is a phenomenon that you can enjoy to the fullest when it happens, to be with those you can no longer be with, with full awareness that you have traveled to that other version of your world, at least for a small time gap. And it may also be that these people have decided to be with you during that time, because it does happen. Sometimes not in such a deliberate or planned way but simply as a coincidence with that because of the desire on both sides to experience something like that. However, you also have to be careful, because many malicious entities will disguise themselves as people who can affect you in a way that suits them. Also, your mind will always be there to shape everything, so it will be your own responsibility to decide what each encounter or dream there means, or what it can bring to you. But this time, in addition, I will leave you with a thought that I think is interesting. Once you become aware that you are dreaming, and having worked on everything we have talked about, you become virtually omnipotent. 
you can shape space and time practically at will. What you experience in your dreams and what you experience when you wake up are two sides of the same coin, two realms in the same reality, which although possessing their own laws, at the same time function under the same dynamics. Connecting these dots, what would happen if a person became aware that this other reality in which you live right now it's also a realm manifested by their ideas? What would that person be able to do? Or rather, what would they not be able to do? See you soon. Best regards. Zaya Lavera.